What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Brandon from Walker's Woodworks. Today we're gonna to be doing a little bit of power carving using some cuts all shaping dishes, rotary burrs, and their contour wheels, possibly hand rest. We'll see how far I get. I got three projects lined up that you can use as gifts or just use to get started in the power carving world. It's super fun and I can't wait to get started. Let's go. First project I'm gonna do is a cigar ashtray. It was one of the first power carving projects I ever did, so I figured it was only fitting to start off with this. I usually do like a segmented cutting board style glue up and then carve it out of that, but I have this piece of figured Claro walnut laying around the shop from a different project that I think will do really well. So let's get started. As you can see, it was kind of a weird shape, so I squared it up as best I could on the bandsaw, and then I took it over to the joiner to get one straight edge before cutting it to final size on the table saw and miter saw. I usually make these about six inches by six inches. This video is sponsored by Cutsall. I've been using Cutsall products for a couple years now and I have to say I'm pretty happy with them. They work amazing and seem to last a really long time. I've used these shaping dishes the most, but I have and will continue to employ their full line of carving and shaping tools into my woodworking projects. I would 10 out of 10 recommend to a friend. All right, let's get to the carving. I started out by securing my workpiece to the bench with some creative clamping techniques. One of the shaping dishes is actually just the right size for the bowl portion of this, so that's what I used to make my guideline. I started out with the coarse shaping dish just to remove the bulk of the material from the bowl. Be sure to hold it as still as possible and don't put a ton of pressure down or it could walk out of your guideline. As you can see, the way the shaping dish is shaped, it actually leaves a high spot in the middle, so I use the edges of it to kind of shape it into a half dome as I go. I also wanted to try out their new contour wheels. It's probably not the best for this particular job, but I do have some great ideas for it in some later projects that you guys will see soon. I switched over to the fine grit shaping dish to smooth the bowl out and do some more precise carving. Once I had the bowl roughed out, I marked and switched over to a three quarter inch rotary burr to create the holders for the cigars. It was just about the perfect size for the job. Again, light pressure for this, power carving definitely has some trial and error, but I find it's fun to be able to freehand things. After the carving, I moved on to sanding. Lots of sanding. Starting off with this little sanding block and then trying pretty much everything else I had on hand in the shop to see what works best, and I think it's probably a combo of them all. I honestly don't even know what this thing is on the end of my drill, I just found it in my drawer. Some sort of abrasive wheel. It worked pretty good though. Then before final sanding, I used a small round over bit just to break over the edges. Once I had it sanded to 220, I used my Gearheart Industries brand and stuck my logo on it. Spraying a small amount of water on the area you're gonna brand promotes a cleaner brand that's more crisp. Don't ask me how or why, it just does. As always, I will leave a link below with a coupon code for you guys to check out Gearheart Industry and maybe get a brand of your own. For finish on this, I went with the natural wax and oil blend finish. We'll let this soak in for a while as I get started on the next project. If you've been following the channel for a while, you'll remember the epoxy river coasters I did a few years ago. I figured I'd bring them back for this video for those that haven't seen them, and I haven't done any in a while, so I thought it'd be fun. I started by ripping a piece of four quarter hickory to four inches that was long enough to get five four inch coasters and then some. Then I clamped it down to my bench and traced out a rough shape I wanted for the river. 
I usually use the medium grit shaping wheel for this, but the fine was already on the grinder and I kind of wanted to see how it would do. It worked okay, but I would probably advise the medium for this. And people always ask me if they're just going to get one shaping dish, which one they should get. Definitely the medium. It's a really good all around shaping dish. You want to carve about half to three quarters of the way through the piece. Also make sure to leave some room on the end so the epoxy doesn't run out. Once that's done, you can flip it over and tape off any holes or cracks on the backside so it keeps the epoxy in. I use the Moss Epoxy's LV 2 to 1 system for this. It's a low viscosity resin that you can pour about an eighth to a quarter inch thick without worrying about it getting too hot. On this project, I'll do two different pours, and on the first one, I mixed in some midnight blue pigment just to give it a nice dark base. Quickly running a torch across the surface helps pop any bubbles that have risen to the top. While the epoxy was curing on the coasters, I went back to the ashtray and buffed in the finish. That was the last step for this one. After about six to eight hours, depending on the temperature, you can come back and pour another layer. I went with a lighter blue this time, and I wish I would have done a little less pigment because I wanted to actually see through it into the dark, but it still came out pretty good. The next day after the epoxy had cured, I hooked up my planer and planed the top of the coasters until it was flush. Once that was done, I went over to the miter saw and cut them into individual coasters. The final size on these is four inches by four inches. Using my trim router, I ran a 45 degree chamfer around all of the tops of the coasters. I'll leave a link to this bit as well as all the other tools I use in this video in the description below for you guys to check out. Then the sanding begins. I start out at 150 grit and go up from there until I get to about 220. I always do what they call water popping to raise the grain, then do a final sand to get an ultra smooth finish. I usually use Rubio Mono Coat on my coasters. It seems to hold up well against water rings and is also easy to refinish if needed. One of my favorite things about doing them this way is that they are all grain matched and sequential. So when you lay them back out, it looks like one piece. All right, final project. I had this cut off from a figured oak slab laying around, so I figured I would plane it down and use it up. I decided to work on my freestyle carving and do some wall art. This is where you can get really creative. I started by just sketching out a rough idea of what I might like to carve and kind of went from there. I kind of just went with the flow on this and let it shape itself. I can't tell you how much fun this is and I'm excited to do more of it and incorporate it into more of my builds. This would be really cool on like drawer fronts or table legs, anything like that that you want to put a personal touch on. It really makes things a one-off. But also this is the medium shaping dish I was talking about.
After I had it all carved, I used a combination of my orbital sander and hand sanding to get it all smoothed out and ready for finish. Again, using the water popping technique to bring the fibers up before the final sand and finish. I went with the same finish on this for a nice natural look. I guess I should have mentioned that this is the color Pure from Rubio Monocoat. That's the one I mostly use, but they do have stained ones as well to get different colors. I just prefer a natural one. Once it's all finished, you can put your hanger of choice on the back. I typically do a keyhole or use like a sawtooth hanger. All three of these projects are really fun to do. I hope this inspires you guys to get out in the shop, start power carving, be creative, maybe even make some gifts or some stuff to sell. Once again, shout out to Cutsaw for sponsoring this video and a huge shout out to you guys. Without you, this channel would not be here. I truly appreciate the support. And until next time, check out that video in the corner. We'll see you on the next one.